Hello everyone, welcome to today's class and in this class we are going to cover principles of forensic science. So forensic science have seven specific principles which only and only concerned with forensic science. Okay, and we all know that forensic science is applied science as well. It is applied science. Its nature is applied science. So in applied science we can apply laws, principles, and methods of pure sciences to solve crime. Okay, and all these methods and laws are related with forensic science, of course, because we are applying to solve the crime. But these seven principles of forensic science are specifically related, only related with forensic science. Okay, so let's understand these important principle of forensic science and before understanding these principles we have some basic knowledge of forensic science so we all know that forensic word comes from a latin word forensis which means the forum which is related to an open court forensic science is a scientific discipline we know that it is a scientific discipline that uses laws and principle of forensic science for the purpose of administration of law okay or to terminate the doubtful questions in front of the court of law the principle of forensic science has a direct impact. So all these seven principles of forensic science have a direct impact on criminal proceeding from the start of the investigation till the end of the investigation or we can say till conviction of the, of the perpetrator. Okay, so we have these seven principles. So first one is law of individuality then we have law of progressive change then we have law of comparison law of analysis law card exchange principle or principle of exchange law of probability and law of circumstantial facts so we will start with law of individuality so law of individuality says that every object it doesn't matter if it's natural or man-made they have some unique characteristic features they have unique quality and characteristic in it which is not duplicated in any other object it is not duplicated so this law is really very important and it is applicable in every crime scene with every evidence because each and everything natural or man-made or machine made they have some unique characteristic feature by which we can identify them or we can eliminate them and it is not duplicated in any other object this law of individuality has been verified in different fields the most common among them are fingerprints so as we all know fingerprints are unique unique structures and no two people have the same fingerprint right millions and billions of fingerprint have studied and yet not a single fingerprint has matched with other whether it is twins or two fingers of the same person we don't have same fingerprint in our two fingers as well any two objects such as grains of sand salt seed twins or man-made objects such as currency note coins laptop suits typewriters all these things they are they have some unique characteristic features. They may seem similar to each other, but they have unique characteristic feature, which is always present between them. Okay, so this is first law of forensic science, law of individuality. That's why every evidence is unique, every crime scene is unique. Then we have law of progressive change. So this, this principle says everything changes with the passage of time. Yes, in simple words, we can say nothing is permanent and the rate of change varies on the different objects. So this law has a significant effect on crime scene investigation because of the changes which is occurring in the crime scene and criminal with passage of time. The criminal evidence, object, everything which is involved in that particular crime will become unrecognized with passing of time. So it is really very important to process the crime scene as soon as we get the information. It is important to um, collect all the evidences from the crime scene as soon as possible because with the passage of time everything will change right if the crime scene is not secured in time for example this is an example for example if the crime scene is not secure in time a change in weather or presence of any animal or human etc may alter your crime scene and the crime scene will change rapidly for again an example road accident on a busy highway may be unrecognized or it will lose all the necessary evidence if not secured on time 
okay the objects such as bullet fragments may develop rust shoes may develop wear and tear marks wooden objects may destroy due to presence of termite or knife may be developed additional patterns therefore quick action is required in all the segments of crime scene investigation clear this is law of progressive change okay so next principle is principle of comparison principle of comparison says only likes can be compared only likes can be compared for example if you have a fingerprint if you have a fingerprint from the crime scene so you can only compare it with fingerprint you cannot compare your fingerprint pattern from the crime scene with shoe print right so that's why we are saying only likes can be compared you can compare fingerprint you can compare fingerprint with the other fingerprint you can compare shoe print with other shoe print or you can compare your chemical with other suspected chemical you cannot compare chemical with fingerprint we cannot compare shoe print with um, let's say some other chemical or bullet or etc it highlights the need of it highlights the need to provide like samples and specimen for comparison with questioned evidence and forensic science just depend on and forensic science majorly depend on comparison right in a murder case for example in a murder case the expert is on the opinion that the person was killed by the stabbing with a sharp piece of rod it will be necessary to so if the expert is saying that the stabbing is done with the piece of rod there is no point sending a knife for comparison right if a bullet is recovered from the dead body is fired from a shotgun it will be useless to send a pistol for comparison we have to send a shotgun right so principle of comparison says only like can be compared then we have principle of analysis so principle of analysis says that there is no better analysis than the sample analyzed there is no better analysis than the sample analyzed for example the analysis is really very important the principle highlights that the need of correct sampling and packing of evidence to avoid tampering and destruction of the evidences which may tamper the effective analysis and result incorrect sampling may mislead the investigation for example you have the best uh, people in the lab you have the best um, instruments in the lab but if the sampling and collection of evidence is not done properly there is no use of uh, extremely talented person in the lab or extremely good investigative instruments in the lab because the sample is not good and if there is incorrect sampling it it will surely mislead the investigation and we will end up having nothing no result for example in a rape case the investigative officer collects the clothes of the victim which had semen and blood stain on it when the clothes were sent for the examination the semen and determination of blood group from them the semen gave ab blood grouping where the victim has a blood group while the accused has b okay so it got mixed okay so that's why we are getting the wrong results so we have to collect and prepare so we have to collect the samples properly and then we have to analyze them properly so it is really very important the best practice for collection package and forwarding of the samples from the crime scene to the laboratory next we have locard exchange principle the most famous principles of forensic science it says whenever two entities come in contact whenever it can be two living people or one person is living and the other person is dead or if an object come came in contact with the person or anything so anything if two objects are coming in contact they will exchange some minute details if two people are coming in contact they will exchange the minute details which is not recognized or which is not seen by the normal eyes or by the observations and all so so that is the thing if two entities are coming in contact they will have an exchange they will have a mutual exchange and they will exchange traces between them these principle this principle was this principle was stated by french scientist and that scientist name is edmund locard therefore it is known as locard exchange principle too okay according to locard when a criminal or, or a murder weapon or any of his object come in contact with victim 
or surrounding they will leave some traces that area whereas it will fix up some traces from that particular place and from victim and there will be a mutual exchange because they will have some contact if these traces are identified by the expert and track it to its original source the criminal can be linked with the crime scene and the victim of course yes this principle is demonstrated in almost all the cases where there is a contact such as fingerprint, foot mark, tire mark, bullet residues, hair sample, etc. So this is really very important and prominent law of forensic science. Next, we have law of probability. So we will work on probability. So we have evidences and we analyze these evidences and after analyzing the evidences, we will create the hypothesis and that is probability, right? We have probability of uh, having some crime or we have probability of victims or like that so this says all identification definite or indefinite are made consciously and unconsciously are on the basis of probability yes the term probability is mostly misunderstood here it determines the chance of occurrence of a particular event in a particular way out of total number of ways which an event can take place or fails to take place with equally with equal facility for example an unknown woman is found murdered in the farm the dead body of that woman had a gold plated tooth hailed food fracture and tattoo on her arm a woman with similar characteristics was also reported missing there will be a probability that that women that missing women can be that dead lady okay which so there are high chances that the unknown corpse that is found is that of missing women the probability of that corpse being of other woman will be one in a million and that identity of the woman corpse is established clear then we have law of circumstantial facts really very important so according to this law we say facts do not lie man can for example we have a fingerprint from the crime scene so if it's my fingerprint, I cannot lie. So this is fact that my fingerprint is present in the crime scene. I am somehow related with the crime scene. I can lie, right? Men do lie, but facts do not. Evidences never lie. If all the evidences are there and if all the evidences are against me, I cannot lie. That's why we depend on evidences. Facts cannot be wrong. It cannot lie. It cannot be wholly absent right therefore the importance of circumstantial facts and evidences is a good evidences in case where a person in the armed forces is known to carry his duty till 10 p.m and resumes it till morning 9 his secret sl secretly slips out of its unit at night and kills a person and returns back secretly to join the duty on time by circumstantial facts he can prove that his presence was there at the unit at the time of the time of that crime and that person can escape the punishment right so it is really very important circumstantial facts are really very important this is the last principle of forensic science seventh one the law of circumstantial facts so these are the law of forensic science law of individuality progressive change comparison analysis exchange principle law of probability and law of circumstantial facts I hope this lecture is helpful to you everyone. Thank you so much for watching this. Have a great day ahead. Take care of yourselves and see you guys in the next class. Till then, take care. Bye.